I have a loud enough voice she could hear me without that probably. I know, that's true. <laughs> let me get let me pull up my Bible app here, hang on. Because you know me, I like to use lots of scripture. All right, but first I'm going to go to Luke 4. Those of you that have heard me preach know that I start with this because I need the, the anointing of the Lord to do this. It says, Luke 4, 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Father God, I thank you that the Holy Spirit is upon me to preach this morning, and I just yield to you, Holy Spirit, to speak through my lips and to say what you want to say, what's on the Father's heart today. In Jesus' mighty name, it'll give you glory. Amen. Amen. How, how many of you ever watch the news? You watch TV? Huh? No, not much. Some of you do. Do you like what you see on the on the news, on the TV? Do you like what you're seeing? No, I don't either. <coughs> I don't either, really. I, as a matter of fact, I don't watch a whole lot of news because a lot of it's too negative. A lot of it's too depressing. A lot of it's too uh, uh, gets me stirred up, gets me angry and stuff like that. And guess what? That's not a good thing, is it? So um, let's turn to uh, Mark 3, but have any of you heard of uh, a speech called A House Divided? Anybody here? History, history lesson. Yes, all right. Abe Lincoln. Yes, he was, uh, it was before he was a president. It was when he was speaking to Illinois. Hmm, imagine that. Abraham Lincoln, it says, this is in his House Divided speech, it says, In my opinion, it will not cease until a crisis shall have been reached and passed. A house divided against itself cannot stand. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall. But I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. <clears throat> you know, a lot of people attribute that that uh, house divided against itself to, cannot stand to Abe Lincoln. Guess what? He didn't say it first. Guess who said it first? Jesus did. Let's turn to, that's where we're going to Mark 3. Amen? And it says, <coughs> it says, a kingdom, this is verse 24, it says, and a kingdom be, if, and if its kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And a ha if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. Hallelujah. Well, you know what? I see a lot of division on TV, don't you? Do you hear a lot of people talking about division? You know, well, you're not vaccinated, so I don't want to be around you. Or you're vaccinated, so I don't want to be around you. Or you wear a mask, so you must be in fear. Or, you wear a mask, so for whatever. Or, you know, you're a Republican, and I don't like Republicans. Or you're a Democrat, and I don't like Democrats. Well, guess what? This is not of God. Can you say amen to that? Amen. That is not of God. <clears throat> Turn to 1 Corinthians 3. And if you listen to that stuff long enough, it'll get on you, and you'll start operating in this stuff. You'll start operating offended, uh, looking out t to see who, who you want to be against instead of who you want to be for. And uh, Satan is a master divider. He is a master at this game. He's been doing it since the beginning of time, and he's trying to do it to the church. He's trying to get one group of believers divided against the other. And if a house, if the church is divided against itself, we're not going to stand, e either in this house or, you know, worldwide, you know. The Charismatics against the Baptists, or the Baptists, the, the ones that believe in vaccinations against the ones that don't believe in vaccinations. The ones that believe in speaking in tongues against the ones that don't believe in speaking in tongues. All that kind of stuff. So, 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 says, For ye are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? 
God is telling us that this division and strife is not of him. Amen? You're going to stay, you're not going to stay a very spiritual person if you keep this division in your heart. Uh, being afraid of people who are vaccinated or being afraid of people who aren't vaccinated, you know, it's not God that's doing this. It's not a godly thing. It's something Satan, like I said, Satan's been doing since uh, Adam and Eve. Turn to Genesis 3. Do you remember the story of uh, Adam and Eve in the garden? Do you? What did, what did uh, Satan tell them? Well, we'll read it, okay, in case you don't remember. This is Genesis 3. We're going to read 1 through about 8. Now, the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And, the woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. What did, what, when they listened to Satan what, and what he was trying to do, what, what did it cause them to do? It divided them from God, didn't it? And then they ran and hid from him. Why? Because they knew they'd done what they shouldn't have done. Well, that's what this division is going to try to do to us. It's going to try to divide us from God. Why? Because God is love. And division is not from the spirit of love. Amen? <clears throat> you know, uh, the story of Satan, you know, he was a, uh, an angel. He was an angel and he got the big head thinking he could be bigger than God. And guess what happened? He divided heaven. He took a third of the angels with him, and he, they were cast out of heaven because they rose up against God, trying to say, "We're bigger than we want to be bigger than you. We want to be better than you. We want to rule. We don't want to listen to you, God." So, guess what happened? God kicked him out. Well, actually, God didn't kick him out. He had an angel kick him out. All right, God didn't even have to lift his finger. So, there's Tim. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. <laughs> I've been waiting for my husband to show up. So, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha. Whew. So, division is not of God. It's something of Satan, but you know, it's very subtle. It's very uh it's very slick. You know, uh the devil will come in and try to uh because you've been watching all this stuff, he'll get you mad at your boss. He'll get you mad at your wife. He'll get you mad at your husband. He'll get you mad at your pastor. He'll get you mad at your uh whoever's uh, the, the head of the clean team on church or the pr head of the praise and worship team on church or whatever, he'll get you divided. Why? Because he's a divider. He's a liar. He's a stealer. He's a killer. He's a destroyer. And he's trying to divide us. Why? Because something that's divided is not as powerful as when it's uh, in unity. Amen? He magnifies the differences. Have you ever heard of uh, the civil rights movement? What's that? <clears throat> that was, you know, the, the whites and blacks, differences between whites and blacks. The differences, uh, other countries, it's the differences of one gr religious group to another religious group. He's always trying to divide us because if he can divide us, he can conquer us. It's Republicans against Democrats. It's white against anyone else, Hispanics or blacks or Jews or whatever. Right now, the critical race theory, have you heard of that? You know what that is? White men are evil. That's a divisive statement. White men are not evil. You know, I was praying about this, and God said, you know, white men, you know why white men went into the world? To spread the gospel. You know, they're called expansionists, colonial. They're called colonialists or whatever. 
the colonials, the colonialists. This, this is something they're going to try to teach our kids, that that's evil, that we should have stayed where we were put. Well, God said in uh, Matthew, the end of Matthew, Matthew 28, verse 19, he said, well, 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. They were filling the Great Commission, because a lot of these people that went out into the world, I'm not saying all of them were good, but a lot of them were on a mission from God. Uh, Christopher Columbus, the Holy Spirit told Christopher Columbus where to sail and how to sail. Now, did everything he do, was it perfect and good and right? He was a human being, of course not. But you know what? He was going in a direct correlation of a revelation he got from God to spread the gospel to the nations. Amen? Well, today's culture tries to tell us Christopher Columbus was an evil man. If you if you have ever listened to David Barton, he has the real deal about uh, he has about a lot of historical phys- figures. He has a lot of their uh, letters. He's bought in a, it's called Wall Builders um, Ministry, and he has the truth about some of these things. But if you listen to the cancel culture out there, it'll have you hating the fact that you're a white person that lives in America because you're an evil person. Well, no, we're not. Brown people can be evil, yellow people can be evil, red people can be evil. Just because you have a skin color, that's reverse discrimination, saying that the white man is evil. No, it's a, it's a spirit that's trying to divide us, trying to bring us down, amen? You know, it's, it's an evil thing, and we need to stand against it. He is, Satan is a liar, he's a stealer, he's a killer, and he's a destroyer. And he's trying to conquer you and keep you from reaching your destiny. Amen? Your divine destiny. <clears throat> what is your divine destiny? To serve God? To live for God? To love God? To have God's power and presence in your life? Amen? He'll try to separate you from your husband or your wife. Getting you mad. Uh, divided. It's like, uh, what's that? Oh, he's... Okay, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing that the devil will say to you sometimes. Well, he did me wrong. He needs to pay for that. You ever heard of the silent treatment? You ever heard of the silent treatment? Yep, have you ever received the silent treatment? Well, yes, I have. have you ever given the silent treatment? Yes, I have. Yeah, why is that? You're expecting that person to make it right. Amen? You're mad at them and you're expecting that person to make it right. Well, guess what? Somebody did make it right, and it was Jesus. And you need to apply what he did to that situation and forgive them. Receive his payment for what was done wrong to you and go on. Amen? Don't let it divide you. Why? Because a house divided against itself will not stand. Your, your marriage won't stand. Your church won't stand. Your nation won't stand if we're divided against each other. Amen? <clears throat> so... Where does Satan try to get in? Well, I said, in the family. He really loves to separate you from your God, from your spiritual authority, and specifically your pastor. Turn to Ephesians 4. If you're a church, if you're a Christian and you're in a church, he loves to try to separate you from the from from God himself, but also for anyone who's in spiritual authority over you. It says, but listen to this. Listen to what the what the job of those who are in spiritual authority over you are. It says, Ephesians 4, 11, and we'll read a few verses. It says, And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Your pastor is here. Those who are in a spiritual authority over you are here to help you grow as a Christian. Don't let the devil lie to you and divide you from them. It says, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man or a mature man, <clears throat> unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. 
but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body, fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplies, according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. He's trying to stop the church from growing. Because if he can get you divided, he can stop your increase. He can stop your spiritual growth. He can stop your financial blessings from coming in. You know, because what's the great commandment? Love God with all that you have and all that you are and love your neighbor as yourself. It says everything else in the Bible centers around that law, the law of love. And your faith will not work without walking in love. So exactly, that's exactly what the devil's trying to do. Trying to get us to hate on one another. Why? So he can stop the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because it's powered by love. Amen? <clears throat> so if you're divided and you're upset and you don't like these people, well, guess what? Your faith is going nowhere. You're not going to get any increase. Your uh, Good things are not going to happen to you. You're going to be stuck. And you won't fulfill your divine destiny. You won't go any further. So if you're easily offended, you better learn to get over it. Why? Because 1 Corinthians 13. And if you're easily offended, get on Facebook, okay? Because you'll, you'll, if you love being offended, just get on Facebook and read a post or two, okay? It'll take you about two swipes to read something that ticks you off. Ask me how I know. Because <laughs> I've done it myself. And the more you look at that stuff, the worse it gets. Not to say that Facebook is evil. It's not evil, but the devil can use th the things that God intended for us to preach the gospel with. You know, he's got movies out there for pornography. Well, that was not why movies and TV were made for. They were ma made for, everything was made to, for the glory of God. God gave us this, this uh, knowledge and this information so that we could promote the gospel and win the world to Christ. Okay, listen to this. This is what, if we're a Christian, one of the, the, the main attributes is, is, of us is supposed to be the love of God flowing out of us. Well, listen to what it says love does. I'm going to turn to this in the, in the Passion. Hang on. <clears throat> it says love is large and incredibly patient. Love is gentle and consistently kind to all. It refuses to be jealous. When blessing comes to someone else, love doesn't brag about one's achievements nor inflate its own importance. Love does not traffic in shame and disrespect nor selfishly seek its own honor. Love is not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Right there, yeah. Uh, that was one, if you've ever listened to Billy Brim, he said she was easily, uh, you know, easily offended. And she had to get this scripture and put it in her cabinet because her husband would say something to her and <clears throat> she would open up the cabinet door and read this scripture. What? She was getting it down in her heart, getting it down in her heart about the love of God, putting it in there. The Bible says, your word, O Lord, have I hid in my heart so that I might not sin against you. Well, that's what she did. Every time her husband would tick her off so that she wouldn't snap back at him and get out of love because she knew that her faith wouldn't work if she got out of love and she'd be stuck. She'd open up that cabinet door and read that thing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Hardly even notices when others do it wrong. And finally, one day, her husband, she made chili, and she made cornbread <clears throat> with the chili. And her husband came home from work, and he's like, well, I didn't want cornbread. I wanted crackers. And she said, just all of a sudden, because she, she was used to opening up that door, all of a sudden, the love of God just flooded over her, and she's like, I've got to get that man crackers. It wasn't like, uh, shut up and sit down and eat the cornbread. You know, it wasn't that wasn't her attitude. It was the love of God overwhelmed her natural feelings or her natural tendency to get offended. The love of God was so jammed down inside of her that it came out, and it caused her to change how she responded to the situation. That's what we've got to do is let the love of God get down in our hearts so that this stuff that's going on around us, you know, the gas prices are going up. 
food prices are going up. You know, it looks like we're going towards socialism. All that stuff is irritating, okay? I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, you know. It's going up and nobody likes it, okay? Whatever you think about the current administration is neither here nor there, okay? Whether you like them or you don't like them, it's like we've got to walk in love with everyone. <clears throat> and we've got to pray for everyone because love is the thing that drives our faith. It says faith works by love. But the devil's trying to get us all riled up, hating one another, so that our faith can't work, so we can't win the world, so we can't have plenty, so we'll come under his rule and authority. But guess what? That's not what God wants us to do. He wants us to rise up above this stuff. The only way we can do that is to continue to walk in love and not let this division and this divisive spirit get off on us Christians who are supposed to be loving and kind and joyful. But if you look on uh, social media, people are mad about this and they're mad about that and they're sad about this and they're sad about that. Well, <clears throat> let's show them something different, amen? I don't even know where I'm at. <clears throat> okay, for, okay, did I read it all yet? Did I read it at all? Okay, right. Okay, it, not easily irritated or quick to take offense. Love joyfully celebrates honesty and finds no delight in what is wrong. Love is a safe place to shelter, for it never stops believing the best for others. Love, ne love never takes failure as defeat, for it never gives up. Amen? So, <clears throat> you know, just ask yourself, am I operating in this, or am I, am, I, am I allowing Satan to divide me from those that I need to be in subjection to, those that I need to have a good relationship with? Maybe it's at work. Maybe it's your customers. Maybe it's your boss. Maybe it's your supervisor. Maybe it's, uh, <clears throat> you know, whatever, the company that you work for in general. Well, don't allow that to happen because it's going to stop. It's going to stop you dead in your tracks. You're going to quit growing spiritually. The minute you get offended, you stop growing spiritually and you go backwards. Amen? Well, I want to continue to grow forward. And maybe you feel like, I haven't grown too much lately spiritually. Well, maybe you need to check out your love walk. Because <clears throat> remember... When we read over there in Ephesians, well, when we read in Ephesians about uh, building ourselves up in love, you know, growing, that those prayers that we uh, pray when we, when we come to corporate prayer, let's go uh, over there. Let's go to Ephesians. This is not in my notes, but it talks about being rooted and grounded in love. <coughs> says here, Ephesians 1, it says, this is what we pray, that, uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding would be enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling and what are the riches of his glory, of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us which we believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. Now let's go to Ephesians 3, and it talks about, <clears throat> here it is. I'm going to just read it all. Of whom the whole, verse 15, it says, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth of, and height, and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God." If you don't have love, guess what? You're not rooted. You're not grounded. You're not going to comprehend anything. You're going to get stupider as a Christian if you're not walking in love. It says it right here. You won't be able to comprehend what the gospel is about and what you're supposed to be doing. If you're always getting offended, you know, you're getting dumber spiritually, not smarter. Well, you know, how do I know this? Because it's happened to me, okay? Okay. I'm not just saying this and pointing a finger at everybody else. I'm looking at myself. 
Turn to 1 Timothy 2. So Satan will try to di divide us from God and from those who are in a spiritual authority over us. He'll also try to uh, <coughs> separate us from natural authority. 1 Timothy. Like, you know, maybe you don't like uh, the president that's in the White House right now. Well, you still need to pray for him. Maybe you love him. Well, you still need to pray for him. Maybe you didn't like the former president that was in there. Well, you should have been praying for him even if you didn't like him. Amen? 1 Timothy 2, 1 through 4 says, I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. God says we need to be praying for those who are in authority over us, naturally speaking, whether it be... Uh, uh, you know, the Governor Pritzker, whether it be President Biden, whether it be, uh, you know, the county board, whomever. We're supposed to be praying for those who are natural leaders over us. Why? So that we can live a quiet and peaceable life. Do you think maybe that's what's happened here? That maybe the church didn't do her job? And maybe that's part of why some of this stuff is going on that we're experiencing now? Because we weren't praying, not th this church, but the church worldwide wasn't praying for its leaders could be could be that we failed to to fulfill this uh call there and uh pray for those in authority but the bible does also say in uh timothy let's get the scripture here <clears throat> about perilous times shall come second timothy 3 1 it talks about uh perilous times coming so some of these things are happening because God, God knew they were going to happen just because he knew the direction man was going to go. Not that God wanted it to go this way. You know, God's original design was for man to live in the garden and for God to take care of him. Well, remember we read about Satan and the Garden of Eden? That, that plan got changed because man decided they didn't want to listen to God. It says, know this, that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Any of you got a selfie stick? Yeah. Yeah, perilous times. Lovers of themselves. They love taking pictures of themselves and posting it on Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof from such turn away. I think we're seeing that. I remember when I got saved in 1973 and I was reading through the Bible and I read this stuff and I thought, wow, that's going to be a horrible day. People will like, be like that because they weren't like that quite so much back in the 70s. They still were a little more, uh, even though it was, you know, whatever. I, I got born again in the Jesus Revolution, so... Yeah, right after the, you know, right after the hippies, that's right. <laughs> so anyway, but I thought, oh, man, that sounds terrible. Well, you know what? That, that's like reading the newspaper today. It really is. If you look at the newspaper, you'll find all this stuff in there. Amen? But guess what? God is bigger. God is greater than the times we lived in. If you think of when Jesus came to the earth, it was the worst time in Israel's history up to that time. They were occupied by a foreign army that hated him, and they were very oppressive, but guess what? He still was able to do God's work. Why? Because he walked in love, and love supersedes all things, amen? And love empowers you to conquer whatever you're facing, amen? <clears throat> so where's another place that, uh, that Satan likes to divide? The family. Kids against parents, husbands against wives, wives against husbands. But like I said before, Jesus already paid for it. Apply that payment that Jesus made at the cross to the fact that you're ticked off at your husband because he did this or he didn't do that. You're ticked off at your wife or your kids or whatever. You know, quit yelling and screaming at each other. That doesn't, that doesn't solve anything. It doesn't solve anything yelling at people. Go in the other room and yell. Just, ah! Let your frustration out. Then go back and talk nicely to them. 
You can be authoritative and talk nicely. You don't have to scream at people. I'm talking to myself here, too, because I get a little hot around the collar sometimes. So, But, you know, and then I feel bad. Randy's back there laughing because he's seen me get ticked off at Jim before. <laughs> Turn to Ephesians 6, 12. This is the thing we have to remember. It says, 6.12 says, well, do 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil, the tricks of the devil. The devil's tricking, got tricks, and he's trying to mess, you, mess with you. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, nor against, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then he talks about putting on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against these things. Well, you know what? Sometimes we forget to do that, and those, that stuff gets into our hearts. That, that anger gets into our hearts. Why? Because we're not watching and, and guarding our hearts, and we're, and we're putting too much of the natural thing into our hearts. Guess what? What you feed yourself on is what you're going to get out. If you want godly behavior, you need to be feeding yourself godly food. If you want natural behavior, you want anger and bitterness and resentment, then just, you know, watch TV all the time, look at your phone all the time, uh, don't do anything that's spiritually edifying. And guess what? That stuff is the natural state of man. It's out there, it's going to get on you, it's going to get in you. If you want something different, you're going to have to change what you're looking at, what you're listening to, the music that you're listening to, the places that you go, the people you hang around with. This is not an AA meeting, but it's, it applies. You know, they tell you in AA meetings, change people, places, and things, I think, or so people have told me. So <clears throat> it's true. As a Christian, when you become a Christian, you need to change the people, places, and things that you hang around. Why? Does it mean you never have contact with that? No, but they better not, that better not be the most contact that you have with things. You need to be having more contact with Christian people, Christian music, Christian TV, that kind of stuff. Why? It's going to feed your faith. It's going to strengthen you spiritually. This other stuff is going to tear you down and put the world in you. And The world is not going to help anybody. The word of God, the love of God is going to change things in people's lives, all right? So Jesus defeated those principalities, though. Thank God. Hallelujah. Colossians 2. <clears throat> we getting anything out of this? I'm not, you know, I'm pointing, th I'm not pointing any fingers at any of you. I'm pointing it at me because, well, I have, I'm married to Tim, okay? <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. He gives me a lot of sermons, okay? <laughs> the Holy Ghost gives me a lot of sermons because of my reaction to things that Tim does, okay? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Why? Because I'm a person, too. And I respond in the natural too much, you know, too many times. And, you know, we all do. But there's better for us. There's bigger for us. There's a, there's a higher place for us. Amen? And that's what I'm encouraging us to do. Colossians 2.15, it says, now, well, let's go back up to yeah, 13. And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Isn't that good? All of our trespasses, past, present and future have been forgiven by the blood of Jesus if we'll just accept him and what he did for us. Even our future sins have been paid for. Woo! That's good. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. In it, Jesus defeated these principalities and these powers that are coming against us, trying to get us off on the wrong track. Hallelujah. 
but we got to yield to him. We got to feed on his word and his way and meditate on what he said, not what Joe Biden said or what the Republicans said or what the Democrats said or what Governor Pritzker said or what Senator Darren Bailey said. You know, that's all good and fine and well, but we need to be meditating on the word of God. Why? Because uh, it talks about, oh, I'm just not in my notes, so let's turn to Romans. <clears throat> 12, 1 and 2 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You know, if you're a Christian, you don't belong to yourself. Your time doesn't even belong to you. Nothing belongs to you. It belongs to God because he purchased you with the precious blood of Jesus. So remember that. And it says, verse 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be transformed from our natural way of thinking and think a higher thoughts. Think God's thoughts. You know, he says, uh, the thoughts that I think, to, that's in, uh, is it Isaiah 55? Let's turn over there. <clears throat> it's not in my notes, but I'm thinking it's Isaiah 55. Yeah, Isaiah 55, let's um, look at set, uh, 6. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. And let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein to I sent it. That's how you get, uh, by thinking on God's word, by meditating on God's word is how you change things, amen? And how you respond. That's how you do it. <clears throat> It'll come no other way. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So if you've been dealing with feelings of frustration, at home, at work, at church. Give that to the Lord. It's the devil trying to come in and cause division. It's not going to work a good thing unless you recognize it and give it to the Lord and allow him to bring you up. Amen? Allow him to put you over and allow him to help teach you how to walk in love because the Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 12 that we're members of one another. We each have a different function, but we shouldn't be getting upset with each other. Amen? Right, dear? Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't get mad at each other. Hallelujah. We all belong to the same Lord, and he's the Prince of Peace. He's the Lord of love. Amen? He is, as a matter of fact, he is love. Um, turn to 1 John 4. <clears throat> says, 1 John 4, 4 says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. In verse 8, it says, He that loveth and knoweth not God, he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. In verse 10, herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. In number 16, and we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love, and he that dwelleth in love God, dwelleth in God, and God in him. Do you think there's any division in God? <clears throat> nope, there's no division. There's only unity. And, and the Bible talks about how unity, be, there's a, a song we used to sing, Behold how good and how pleasant it is 
for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It talks about it's like the anointing oil that flowed down off of Aaron's head onto his beard and onto his clothing. That, that unity brings the anointing. What is the anointing? The burden removing, yoke destroying power of God. That's in Isaiah. I need some burdens removed and some yokes destroyed in my life. How about you? Well, we need the anointing to do that. Anger and frustration and division is not going to bring that stuff into our life. It's the love of God and yielding to the love of God, walking in the love of God, <coughs> and, and not allowing Satan to come in and cause division. Amen? Let's, let's begin to walk in love like it says in 1 Corinthians 13, 4. If you have problems with that, you know what? You need to write that down on some, uh, like a piece of paper or make a big flyer. Get on your computer and write 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. Hang it up where you see it, in your bathroom, in your bedroom, at work, whatever. So they, like Billy Brim would go, to the co- would go to the cabinet and open the door when she wanted to mouth off to her husband because he said something. Because that she knew that that was going to stop her from growing spiritually, was going to stop her faith from working for whatever she was in faith for if she didn't operate in love. Well, I'm tired of getting no results. How about you? Yeah. Well, that's okay. So if you're tired of getting no results or getting few results, we need to begin to walk in love. Because that is the supreme command, and that if that's the supreme command, it's going to work for us, amen? When we plant our seed in the tithe and offering, you know, we have to do it. Number one, you know, loving God, but loving our church, loving our pastor, loving the word of God, being obedient to God, because we're walking in love. We do that thing. <clears throat> so let's begin to walk in love. Let's forgive one another. Let's not let division come in. Let's use our authority over the devil and tell him, nope, you're not going to get me offended. You're not going to divide me from my pastor. You're not going to divide me from my husband or my wife or the people that I work with. You're not going to divide me (coughs) in whatever area he's trying to bring division. Use your authority. Put him under your feet. Talks about it, that you've been given all power and authority in Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Start using it over the devil. Amen? When he tries to bring this stuff on you, don't let it come on you. Why? Because it's going to stop your spiritual growth. It's going to stop your faith from working, and you're going to be stuck, and you're not going to be a witness for the Lord, and people are not going to be drawn to God, and Jesus is coming back soon. We don't have much time to get the people in. Amen? We don't have a lot of time to get the, the world saved before the Lord returns. So this is critical Because the Bible says perilous times are coming. It's here. These things are going to happen. These terrible things are going to happen. But if we act and treat people the way the world does, we're not going to be effective. I want to be an effective Christian, don't you? I want to see the lost saved. I want to see the great harvest come in. I want to see these pews fill up. I want to see all the things that God promised happen. But it starts by us not listening to the lies of the devil, and listening to God and walking in love. Now let's turn to 1 Corinthians 15, and then I'll be done. <clears throat> you know, I know people, uh, this is just an example I know people who quit going to their hairdresser. Not me, somebody else. I know people who quit going to their hairdresser because they believed in getting vaccinated and their hairdresser didn't. Or that they didn't believe in it and their hairdresser did. Or, you know, they quit going here, they quit going there. I, I, that's happened in churches. I know people that have quit going to a church, have go- quit going to their church that they went to for years because of the vaccine deal. That's division coming in. That's strife. And the Bible talks about where there's strife and envy and strife, there's confusion in every evil work. The devil wants an inroad into your life so that he can kill, steal, and destroy. And if you let that stuff in, strife and envy, you're opening the door wide to the devil. And that's exactly what all this stuff is trying to do. So 1 Corinthians 15. So beware because the devil's smart. He's been around thousands 
in thousands and thousands of years. He's pulled this on mankind for as long as he's been a, a, a kicked out of heaven, and he knows the buttons to push on you. You've got to get the word of God in you so that when he pushes your button, it doesn't bother you anymore. Amen? And you don't let that stuff come up in you. It says, 15, 57, and 58. But thanks be to God, which has given us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I encourage you today, check your heart. See if strife or envy or division has tried to creep in there and tried to separate you in these different areas, and if so, kick it out. Use your authority, get the devil out of there so that things can begin to work again in your life. Amen? Amen.